Ja, das ist ja auch noch nicht. Ja. Das ist auch noch nicht. So that short clip was showing how the patient was snoring under the effect of uh, deep anesthesia. Now, what he's seeing right now is the patient's left cavity of the nose and I'm going through that cavity into the oral cavity from the nose. Yes, I'm entering the patient's mouth from the patient's left side nose. Now, what you can see right now is a huge space. Whatever black shadow you can see, like a tunnel, a huge tunnel, at the deep end of which you can see the vocal cords through which the patients breathe. So this is, in this clip right now, the patient is awake, fully conscious oriented, and you can see the airway was quite open. So now what you can see, the patient is completely under the effect of anesthesia. Now to begin with, the patient undergoes mild anesthesia. What you can see on the screen is the flexible bronchoscopic unit, which I use to do the DICE procedure. Now, here we go. This is a patient's left nasal cavity going straight inside with the camera, which is flexible. Now I'm going to intentionally point the camera facing downwards. Now what you can see, this is a patient's right side of the soft palate and this is the central part now we can see that there is not much space inside because the patient is under the effect of anesthesia even though it's a mild to moderate anesthesia right now you can see how the muscles are contracting and they are narrowing up the space inside you can actually see a lot of secretions have uh is also present there you can actually see the vibrations inside. So as the patient is trying to breathe, you can see a lot of vibrations as the soft tissue from all over is coming in contact with each other. And now you can see as the anesthesia is uh, getting more deeper and deeper, you can see almost the entire area is getting blocked off. The same area which was completely wide open when the patient was conscious oriented and wide awake. That same area, after the effect of anesthesia, you can see under uh, going under a lot of narrowing. So now, when I'm trying to put my endoscope further beyond that constricted narrow part, you can still see the amount of vibrations happening. And these vibrations are the, the reason why the patients snore. The sound which you get of snoring is because of all these vibrations touching and hitting each other. So again, I'm going to put the endoscope in the patient's left side nose and I'm going to point my endoscope downwards. Now you can see the patient is trying to breathe. The patient is almost under the effect of anesthesia and you can actually see the vibrations. You can actually see the vibrations and that vibrations are giving the effect of snoring for the person. Now this is at the level of the soft palate. That is the soft palate is an area between the patient's uh, nose and the oral cavity. So if you happen to look uh, at this area from your mouth perspective, looking in the mirror, you'll be seeing some structure hanging off the roof of this very structure called as uvula. But we are having a look from a superior direction from the nose. So it's going to look like this. So you can see it's trying to open up, trying to narrow down. And uh, it depends upon the, the phase of the sleep the person is currently so you can see I'm trying to pass my endoscope further down beyond and you can see a structure called as the epiglottis which is exactly at your 6, 7 and 8 o'clock right now. You can see a leaf like structure and beyond below that you can see a V-shaped structure trying to open up and close. These are the patient's vocal cords and you can see a tunnel going beyond that's the patient's windpipe which reaches up to the patient's lungs basically. So from this point onwards, what you're seeing right now, uh, currently what is happening in front of you right now happens for almost all the human beings. This is a normal pattern of breathing where everything remains open so that we can freely breathe without even snoring. 
So uh, now I'm going to ask my anesthetist to keep on increasing the dose of the anesthesia. And now I can see something new at this level. The vocal cords are completely getting shut. Now this can be normal sometimes. Sometimes a patient can have a single episode of swallowing bout in his or her deep sleep as well. So that time the vocal cords have to shut off. But now what you can see right now, this uh, shutting off the vocal cords is definitely not normal. And uh, you can see a complex uh, spasmodic movement of the array epiglottic folds. That is the A folds uh, shutting off the complete uh, airway. So hence the patient will definitely have a phase of apnea where the patient cannot breathe. And now you can see the patient has returned back to his normal breathing where he cannot see any kind of spasm or any kind of uh, muscular abnormal activity. This is how the normal airway should be open. But as I said, depending on what phase the patient is, the patient may land up in snoring anytime and as you can see right now, now you can see the airy epiglottic folds are undergoing vibrations once again. Now this is also the reason for snoring. So, so far the patient has an issue in the soft palate and now you can see the patient also has an issue in the A fold level. Now I'm going to keep on asking my anesthetist to keep the dose high right now. You can see this is a soft palate area, the oropharynx basically. And you can see that's complete circular narrowing. So this patient has a huge uh, problem of uh, snoring. Since three long years, he's been having a huge difficulty in sleeping. He cannot sleep properly. He cannot uh, properly sleep without a CPAP machine. The patient is currently on CPAP machine for like two and a half years. But now it's becoming more and more of an issue for him. Even after the use of CPAP, the patient is still not getting quite sound sleep. So the reason for this, you can see now, as you can see, this is, you can see the complete obstruction at the level of soft palate. Even I'm finding it hard for to control my endoscope right now because of severe muscular activity down here. You can see severe vibrations at the level of the AE fold. You can see severe closure of the airway once the patient tries to breathe. So this movement, what you're seeing right now, is the reason why the patient snores so loudly in his or her sleep. So this patient is having issue with the soft palate and the AE fold so far. But now as I ask my anesthetist to keep on increasing the dose to make the patient go in deep sleep, now you'll see something else as well. So as you can see at this point, the epiglottis also has become really floppy and is getting pushed off to completely shut the airway. As you can see, the epiglottis is moving to and fro from front to back. And when the patient is trying to breathe, the epiglottis is completely shutting off the airway very easily. So how are the dose of the anesthesia? A lot of more changes I was able to see and also you can see in this video. So mild anesthesia mimics a mild sleep. The deepest point of anesthesia will definitely simulate the deepest phase of sleep which a normal human being would be having otherwise. So as you can see, the epiglottis is also getting pushed back. Now, one more important point to remember and to look for here is the tongue movement. Now, but uh, normally the patient's back of the tongue also falls back and results in the epiglottis to get pushed behind, causing the airway to get closed up. But in this case, the the tongue fall was not there. The back of the tongue was looking kind of normal. Very slight movement though. Also, the patient did not have any lingual tonsil. So we have uh, issues at three levels over here. The soft palate, the, that is the oropharynx as well. Huge circumferential oropharyngeal soft tissue involvement. You can see that's the epiglottis falling back onto the airway. So the second point is the epiglottis. And the third point is the airway epiglottic fold also getting pushed up medially by the movement of the oropharyngeal area. So you can see a lot of secretions are there as well. And this is kind of very severe for a patient to have a snoring this loud. So the only, re the only way out of this is basically two methods. Now you can see how the epiglottis is getting pushed back without the uh, tongue falling back. You can see the at your six, seven, and eight, you can see that's your tongue, that's the patient's tongue, whatever irregular surface you can see at six, seven, and eight o'clock. 
is the tongue but the tongue was not moving much so the only solution for this is basically two methods the first one is use a uh, CPAP which is continuous positive airway pressure machine so the patient has to wear that machine where a force of uh, a jet of air has been thrown by the machine uh, which synchronizes with the patient's breathing pattern and under that pressure opens up the airway and allows the patient to have a patent airway and a normal sound sleep without snoring but if the patient doesn't use that CPAP machine the patient will again land up in this same situation so the second so the second solution is surgery where we take care of all the excess soft tissue to make sure that the patient has an open airway and doesn't get blocked off